Okay, I'm gonna do something a little bit different today. Uh, I'm gonna do some tutorials on WordPress. I've been playing with the platform for about the last year and a half or so. Uh, I've learned a lot in that time. Uh, there's been a lot of changes to the platform over the, the last couple of years. I, I wanted to go and really try to learn how to use the block editor. So I spent some time really kind of sharpening my skills in that. Uh, also been watching a lot of videos and I've learned a lot and I think you know, there's still uh, still a lot of uh, people struggling with the block editor uh, out there, especially trying to learn it from scratch. So I'm going to do a couple of videos on uh, what I've learned, how to be as productive as possible, uh, re you know, developing on WordPress. Um, I do like to keep things really thin, so I'm not a, I'm not a big plugin fan. Uh, and I, I'm really con conscientious about performance and and keeping things running um, pretty quick. So that's gonna be the basis for this. The first video of the series is really gonna be just getting an environment up and ready. And then I'll dive into some of the, the configurations that I use, the default way that I set up a WordPress environment, and then how I uh, save that off and kind of start from a, a ready to use and develop in environment. So that's kind of where we'll, we'll get things going. And then I'll jump into, you know, the block editor, uh, some of the components I think that are, you know, where the blocks, I guess we would call them, uh, that I get the most use out of. And we'll, we'll do a deep dive on that as well. But today was really going to be about setting up an environment to run locally. Uh, I'm going to, to do this just because a couple of reasons, uh, I typically you know, have a local environment running on my laptop. I tend to travel a lot. Uh, and when you're on a plane at 35,000 feet and the internet connection's bad, uh, and you still want to be able to do some work, it's nice to have that environment there. So you, you know, you can write some code, you can, um, do some graphics work and you're not hindered by not having a connection into a cloud account. So this is a, a great way to run WordPress or other PHP applications locally. Talk about a couple of the solutions. Uh, I go a little bit off. Uh, the normal path, I would say, with a couple of things that I like to do, uh, and I'll explain why as we get there. So the first product we're going to install today is called WAMP Server. Um, WAMP standing for Windows Apache HTTP Server, um, MySQL Database Server. Uh, there's a couple other pieces in there, and then you've got PHP MyAdmin, which is a browser-based uh, database administration tool, and then the PHP uh, coding language. You'll get several versions of that that you can use with WAMP as well. There is uh, a another product out there called XAMP, which if you want a little bit more broad scope than just PHP and MySQL, uh, I recommend you go try XAMP. They're, they're both very similar. I like the configuration of um, WAMP myself just because there's a really nice little menu um, that, that'll show up that gives you access to a bunch of things. It's all pre-configured for PHP already, uh, really easy to switch versions. So you can do some level of testing. Um, and I don't, I don't need, uh, to be able to do, you know, other languages or other databases. I'm, I'm pretty set in my tech stack for doing, you know, WordPress and basic web development. So that's kind of why I go with WAMP. Uh, if I'm going to do something in Python or, uh, another language, you know, Node.js, I'll, I'll, I'll either run them natively or for Python, I would just use, um, something like Anaconda and Jupyter notebooks, which I've you know, become pretty familiar with. So for me, you know, I go with the smaller installation of WAMP, really easy to get configured, get it up and running. Uh, and then you're pretty much off to the races and then we'll dive into, you know, the, the process of getting the stuff installed. There's a couple, uh, things that you need to kind of go through, um, to get WAMP up and running on your local machine. So there's a bunch of, you know, windows. Um, C++ distributions that you need to make sure that you have on there. So we'll dive into that a little bit. Uh, and then we'll go through a, an initial WordPress, uh, installation and get that all set up and configured. And then, you know, we'll go through how, how to set up an environment, how to get it saved off, uh, and then be able to be able to basically reuse that for any environment that you want to go spin up, um, for any new project that you might have. Once we get the WAMP product installed and up and running. We're then going to, to install the MySQL workbench. MySQL workbench is really redundant to what PHP MyAdmin gives you. Uh, I like the MySQL workbench just because it's a, it's a fat client, so it runs locally. I don't have to wait for the browser to refresh. It tends to be a little bit faster. Uh, you can store and save scripts 
Uh, for me, it's just a, you know, it's a productivity enhancement tool. If you're doing a lot of database work and you're, you know, you get into some complex queries, uh, you want to have a, you know, a good, um, visual view of your, your databases, your indexes, keys, all the things that go into some, you know, some of the more complex aspects of, um, database development. I think you'll find some benefit to using MySQL Workbench. Uh, it is free from from Oracle, so you can just go download it. I'll throw a, a link to all the, the different products in the description so you can go find them yourself. Uh, and then from there, you can, you know, you can create your own databases um, and connect them into either WordPress or other solutions you might be developing. Uh, from there, we'll go, I'll show you where the, the latest version of WordPress is. So we'll go download WordPress 672. Uh, we'll unpack it. We'll put it in the directory for the HTTP server in WAMP. So, and then we'll go through the whole configuration process. Uh, we'll create a database in MySQL Workbench, and then we'll show, you know, kind of how uh, that initial login kind of works, and then you're, you're off to go from there. All right, so diving right in. Okay, so this is the download site for WAMP, which I'll also link in the description. Really easy, it's a free product. Uh, it is kind of big, takes a little while to download. So, you know, go get the file, install it into a folder, uh, and then you're you're pretty much ready to start installing. Uh, there are a bunch of prerequisites that you will have to install. I'll put a link to sharpcorner.com into the description as well, so that you can go get them. Uh, you're, you're gonna need both versions of each of these. So there's gonna be an x86 version and an x64 version. So x86 being the processor, 64 being the bits, uh, you're going to need both versions for each one of these. I already had a bunch of them pre-installed um, with Windows, or a, a lot of them are no longer required. So just go through the ones. If you already have it installed, it won't. It, it'll it'll tell you that it's installed. You don't need to reinstall it. Um, so it's pretty easy. A couple of them, I think, even requires a, a reboot of the machine. So be prepared for that. But you know pretty much low threshold for getting all the prereqs in, and then you're ready to go. You can go and start um, getting the WAMP server going from there. So we'll jump right into that. So I've already got everything downloaded. I'm not gonna make you sit through that. We're just gonna jump right in. I'm gonna go straight defaults, so I'm not gonna do anything crazy. Just put it right in the default folders. Show you what that looks like here once we're through it. So I'm just putting it on the C drive, WAMP64. Uh, remember that is the root because that's where the root of your websites will be. Uh, I got multiple drives here, but I'm just gonna leave it right on, on the C drive. All right, so I'm gonna fast forward through some of this stuff. I'm not gonna make you sit and, and watch it all. So, you know, we'll speed ahead here a little bit. Okay. So now we've got WAMP installed. We have not started it yet. We're going to go ahead and get MySQL Workbench going. That over here. This is pretty quick to install. So again, all the defaults, really easy. And once we get this moving, we'll go ahead and get WAMP started. We'll, okay, just changing screens. Now we've got MySQL Workbench installed. We can go ahead and start the WAMP server. I have an icon here. It will be in your app listings if you don't see it there. Then install an icon on the desktop. You can see WAMP is now starting. So it gives this little flash screen. And then from here, what you'll see is down in your icon tray, you'll have a new little icon. Everything's working good. Every, uh, it'll be green. And this is your work, your WAMP server admin interface. So if you click on that, you'll now get all of these menu items. You can go and pull up your local host. So we'll, we'll do that here. And you can see this is my local host running on my loopback adapter. And from here, I can get to the other tools as well. All right, so I can get to a bunch of different stuff. Let's go down and look at the, the WAMP menu though. 
So you've got localhost, you've got PHP at my admin. We've already talked about that. That's where we can go and um, do administration for the database, but through the browser. Uh, I don't know what at miner is. Virtual hosts, you can create your own virtual host as well. Uh, that's, you know, it's basically Apache configuration stuff, which you can do in, in a bunch of different ways. Uh, PHP versions, you can change those here. If you have multiple versions that you're running, or if you need to, you want to add one, uh, especially if, uh, you know, you're going through time and a new version of PHP comes out and you want to go test some stuff, you can actually just go load it right into the directory. It'll pick it up here and you can, you can start playing with it right from there. A couple different database options, same thing. You can play around with versions. Uh, you can play around with MariaDB. So all of that's right here. You can stop and start all the services or restart if you change a configuration option. For us though, we're going to bring up the local host. So I just did that. And then we're just going to go over and um, log into PHP my admin. So click on that. It takes a second. This is why I like my SQL workbench. All right. And then you're going to get, you're going to get brought up to the screen. So this is the the login page for PHP my admin. Your version after you install WAMP, uh, you're not going to need a password. So the root password for the default configuration is blank. So you won't need to put anything into this field. Originally, I've already set up my password for this. So I've got a value in there already. I can go ahead and log in. When you log in and you don't have a password set, you can go right here in, in the settings and change your password for um, your MySQL server, okay? So if I wanted to go change the password, I could do that right here, okay? Nice and easy. Okay, so now we've got WAMP running, we've got MySQL workbench running. We can go and actually access the database from my SQL workbench. So same thing when you go into this view, you got the tabs up top here. Uh, if I wanted to create a new, uh, if I wanted to create a new connection, I could just go right here. And this is where, you know, you can, you'll, you'll create your connection, set up your password, store it in the vault. So you don't have to put it in every time. Uh, create a name for it if you want, and then you can, you know, you can start using my SQL workbench from here. I've already got that done. So I've already got a tab open. And then from here, you can see that there's a, there's a base system database that's in there, or, you know, we, in, in this, we're going to call them schemas in the tool. So we're going to create a new schema here for WordPress. So click that, just call it WP-test. We're going to apply that here. You can see the commands that are going to be used. And there you go. So now we've got our database added. We're ready to start our installation of WordPress. So let's go get to that. Got it in our downloads folder. So we're going to extract that here. So just go and expand it. Once you download it from the WordPress site, I'll put the link for that download in the description. Expand it. We'll speed through this a little bit. Okay, so now I've got my folder for WordPress 6.7.2. It's the latest version when I made the recording. Uh, I'm going to drill down into that folder, and I'm going to copy all of this content, all of these PHP files, all of these folders, everything in here, and I'm going to go back to that WAMP64 directory. And I'm going to create a new folder here for my website. We're just going to call it WP test. Same as same name as the database. I'm going to drop all those files in here. And that's it. So now I've got 
in my web root, I've got a directory called WP test with everything in that directory that I need to run WordPress or get it installed. So let's go and start playing with that. So we're going to go to localhost slash WP test. Okay, so this is the install for WordPress on a local machine. Typically don't see this if you're using WordPress through a host provider, because they'll do all this automatically in the background. Database name is going to be WP test. Username is root. Password is P. And that's all we need. All right. So I made it through that part of the installation. WordPress can now communicate with your database. If you're ready, we're ready. All right. So, so, so site title is just going to be WP test. Username I have, I'll just put something in temporarily. Have my own password. And I don't need the email address to get going. Okay. Now we're installed. And we're ready to go and log in. So from here, I can go to localhost slash WP test slash WP at, and here we go. Now I can go and log right into the system. Make sure I got the right passwords. All right. Now I got it. All right. I might need to go read. And that's it. Now I'm into a clean install of WordPress. I can see all the defaults. So I've got a hello world post already. Uh, I've got my sample page. I've got the default plugins. There aren't many you'll notice with the default version of WordPress and I'm ready to go. So in the next video, we'll start going through some of the, the base configuration that I typically will go through for a site like this. Some of the plugins that I'm going to install just kind of for a baseline before I start doing any real work. Uh, and then we'll show you kind of how to start building a base platform that you can reuse over and over every site you're building. So that'll be on the next video. We'll jump into that here real soon. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of this. If you have any questions, just drop them below and we'll do our best to get answers to you soon. Thanks.